Welcome to Lessons in Leadership, Steve Adubato, with my trusty, trusted and trusty colleague, Mary Gamba. Mary, how are you today? It's an amazing day as always, Steve. Thank you. How are you? I'm great. Listen, don't make a big deal about the fact that I've changed ties. I got a new suit. And my wife said to me, stop wearing the same look for the last 20 years. So I yeah, I, I almost didn't recognize you, Steve. You look great. I'm excited. And uh, I can't see what's going to come next for our, our uh, future tapings. Well, here's the deal. Leadership is about evolving, pivoting, changing. And in that spirit, we have someone who does that every day. There was absolutely a terrible segue there. Greg <laughs> Erie. Greg Erie is the chief security officer at the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, one of our longtime partners. Good to see you, Greg. Steve, Mary, thanks for having me on this morning. You got. And by the way, can you show that swag a little bit, the Port Authority logo? Let me sit up. And Mary told me not to move, but there you go. <laughs> he follows directions very well. Greg, it's great to have you with us. Thank you. It's great to be here. Uh, by way of background, your approach to leadership, you're dealing with leadership, you're being a leader in many ways from your background is about um, being under pressure, crisis situations. Real quick, a uh, minute or less background to you come into this position at the Port Authority, some of the things that you did before that. Absolutely. And, you know, you don't realize the leadership lessons you're learning as you go through what feels like a very short period of time. But I started back in 1990. I was an officer in the United States Air Force in the security police and security forces field. Learned a lot of a lot of leadership lessons there. Moved on and was recruited in 1998 into the FBI uh, as a special agent. And just over the course of the career, thanks to, thanks to many mentors and to seeing leadership, sometimes bad, but mostly good, Moved up in the ranks and retired a couple of years ago as the special agent in charge of the Newark, New Jersey field office, and then had this opportunity to come to the Port Authority, uh, which I thought I knew uh, and I thought was a I knew it was a complex entity, but just massive and such critical infrastructure and a chance to employ those leadership lessons and learn even more. And the job right now, describe the primary responsibilities, Greg. It's, again, the port's this complex entity that's the bridges, the tunnels, uh, the airport, the bus terminal, uh, the path train. So all these different transportation nodes that uh, I think most of us, especially up here in the New York, New Jersey area, realize is absolutely critical to keeping not only people fed, people moving, people safely getting to their jobs. The Office of the Chief Securities Officer we have underneath us, of course, the Port Authority Police Department, which is the largest transportation uh, police entity in the United States. And then we have our civilian counterparts and our support mechanisms. It's altogether about 3,500 people out of the 8,000 members of the port. So it's a big chunk of it, and it shows you the emphasis that the port places on that security. And as Mary jumps in here, let's also put things in perspective. Uh, the World Trade Center, uh, September 11th. The Port Authority responsible for the World Trade Center. The Port Authority lost staff. They lost officers. They were critically involved in trying to save people's lives. To put things in perspective, the Port Authority is an incredibly important entity organization in this region, and uh, security could be no more important after 9-11 than, than ever in the history of this country. Mary, jump back in. Yeah, no, and I don't know how to segue from from that, but definitely it was such a tragedy, and I know that you were very closely involved in that, Greg. And I had a question just about with leadership, and Steve and I talk about this all the time, leaders have to make really tough decisions, and I can only imagine the most challenging decisions you've had to make. And often, as a great Colin Powell once said, sometimes those decisions, frankly, quote, piss people off. How do you deal with that? How do you how do you approach those situations so you get buy in from your team, right? Giving them that hard to hear information, but not worrying about being liked or being not liked. Um, talk about that a little bit. It's Mary you probably drilled down on one of the most difficult pieces uh, of leadership because innately in all of us, we all would like to be liked and we want to have that teamwork. And but those tough decisions, they just come along. And you mentioned one of my personal heroes, Colin Powell. Uh, you know, who people can study. And he got it exactly correct. You know, the thing you have to do is prepare your team for that before those crises, before those decisions happen and saying, hey, this is not a popularity contest. And while we all want to have that input and I want to hear from you, there are going to be times where it's time to act. Let's make the decision. Let's do it. And getting that preparation in place, it makes it easier. It doesn't make it easier personally, but it makes your team understand it more. 
that they can they can hear and understand that these decisions weren't made in a vacuum, but when they had to be made, this is the time to do it. I, I go back to what both you and Steve mentioned. You know, obviously, we always have as New Yorkers and New Jersey uh, residents the focus on 9-11, but it's a badge of honor we wear here at the port very heavily that the port authority, the facilities, are the most attacked targets by terrorists in the world. It's been over six times that we've either had the terrorist attacks, some of them widely known, like 9-11, like 93, but it goes back to 1975, a bombing at an airport in LaGuardia. Long history, long history. Greg, let me let me try this. Um, <clears throat> we know about you not only because of your public uh, persona and profile, but because the chairman of the Port Authority, our good friend, and check out previous interviews we've done on Lessons in Leadership with Kevin O'Toole, the chairman of the Port Authority. I ask Kevin this every time he's on, so I'm going to ask you as well. Sure. The biggest change evolution, whatever you want to call it, the biggest change in you as a leader in the last 10 years, because we're constantly, one of the themes in, in our new book, Lessons in Leadership 2.0, The Tough Stuff, we talk about changing and leaders who say, I'm good the way I am. I'm going to stay the way I am. It's ridiculous because the game's changing, sports change, uh, security changes, media changes, obviously. Long-winded way of getting to this, the biggest change in you as a leader in the last 10 years is uh, Steve, such a great question, is just that you need to evolve. It, it, the moment anybody mentions the word expertise or I am a fully a, you know, competent <laughs> leader, I get nervous. I say, because I'm a student of leadership and you have to be. It has to be that constant growth, that evolution. And too often people fall back on, I hear more often frequently, oh, the new next generation, the generational issue. Well, when haven't we had that? When hasn't a generation changed? And leadership should evolve with those generations. Say people have evolved. The, the society has evolved. Your leadership style has to evolve with it or you're going to fail. Mm. And that spirit uh, and, and evolving. Mary, I've been getting some feedback that I'm taking too much airtime and I should <laughs> give the ball. You sure I have. Actually, I'm just going to jump we'll in. and <laughs> We're taping this in. Listen, the giant season is going to be over soon <laughs> enough. We're taping this. Right after Thanksgiving. I thought it already was over, Steve. Wow. <laughs> that hurt. Mary, the ball's going back to you, and I try not to fumble it, okay? All yours, oh, go ahead. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. And and you mentioned that younger generation, Greg, and I would love to talk a little bit about grit and resilience. I feel ever since the pandemic, people have just been honing in on that. Like, look at us. We've got grit. We've got resilience. We've learned so much over the last three and a half years. How important do you believe grit and resilience and being agile is to being an effective leader? Oh, I think they're essential qualities. And uh, again, I hate to compare and contrast. I, I think it's just innate in us as human beings. We always thought we had it harder. We did it better. We were tougher and grittier. Uh, <laughs> and I think we, we, we have to look at what generations have gone through. This latest generation, people kind of underestimate. These are people that have known warfare for over a decade, that they've dealt with it, even as a society, they weren't in the military or, or in the police or law enforcement. We've been at war for years and years. These are veterans coming back. These are also people, uh, the, the younger generation, X, Y, Z, I always get them confused, but that are also have efficiencies that we never had, the technology, technology efficiency. They're able to do multiple things at multiple times. So I wouldn't underestimate them. I think having that determination is innate in our society, especially here in America, but it's so important to have that leadership that not only are you able to bear down and persevere, but that the people that you're leading are able to do the same. You know, uh, Greg, let me say this. And first of all, thank you uh, and the team at the Port Authority for what you do every day, keeping us in the region safe. Thank you to the chairman of the Port Authority, our good friend, Kevin O'Toole. We wish you, uh, first of all, I should have said early on, thank you for, sounds like a cliche, but it never gets old. Thank you for your service to our nation. Thank you for what you're doing now. Uh, we're honored to have the Port Authority as a longtime partner uh, in what we do. And as I said, managing so many important infrastructure uh, facilities and other related um, avenues of our lives. Our lives would not be what it is, what the, what it is today, if not for the Port Authority. Thank you, Greg. We appreciate it. Steve, thank you for having me on. Mary, a pleasure as always. And at some point, we need to get some of that Port Authority swag. Oh. Right? <laughs> it's 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 on the way, Mary. I know. I, I see he neglected to get your size. You know, I, I'm this. used to it. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will get two of these over to you immediately. And if it, if it doesn't let him off the hook, as soon as uh, Kevin saw me in my chief's, I, I'll send you the chief security officer fleeces. He saw me oh, in one. Oh, that's and that was very it. cool. Yeah, that that's was it. it. He had, had to, to have it. Have it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank so, you, Greg. Appreciate it. Thank this you is, both. Have a great day. Stay with us. Lessons in Leadership. Be right back. 
This edition of Lessons in Leadership is made possible by the Bucino Leadership Institute at Seton Hall University, Prager Metis, Valley Bank, the International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825, the North Ward Center, the New Jersey Sharing Network, Delta Dental of New Jersey, the Helix, Fedway Associates, Inc., the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, Veolia, Resourcing the World, and Seton Hall University, showing the world what great minds can do since 1856. This is Mary Gamba. If you want more leadership tips and tools, log on to stand-deliver.com. That's stand-deliver.com. Promotional support for this edition of Lessons in Leadership with me, Steve Adubato, and my colleague, Mary Gamba, has been provided by NJ.com, NJBIA, and New Jersey Business Magazine, CIA NJ, and Commerce Magazine, and Meadowlands Chamber, celebrating 50 years of building connections and driving business growth. This is the Seton Hall story, one that comes to life every day on our campus. This is the place where great minds discover, innovate, collaborate, and find their true calling. This is the place where passion has a purpose, where learning inspires leading. The bonds we make, the values we teach, inspire our community to take heart and take action. This is Seton Hall University. This is what great minds can do. Welcome back to Lessons in Leadership. Steve Adubato with Mary Gamba. Mary, we have a new team member on we our sure production did. team of the Caucus Educational Corporation, our sister not-for-profit organization. Zyphus Lebrun is uh, executive producer of One on One with the one and only Steve Adubato. Zyphus, how are we doing? I'm well, thank you, sir. How are we about you? Good, Zyphus. Let's get this out of the way. First of all, Zyphus is called Z on our team because yes. the first thing he said when we brought him on board is, listen, just call me Z. But also, pronounce your last name the way it should be pronounced. Oh, wow. Okay, so technically it's Le Brun, which is the actual French pronunciation, but I've anglicized it just to make it easier for everybody. So does Le Brun get, do we get away with that? I want to make sure it's not disrespectful. Yeah, not at all, my good man. Not at all. Not at all at all at all. Um, uh, Great. I've, I've, yeah. It works? Okay, good. We have no more time. That's it. That's it That's for this it. Segment. Thank you. That's it's it been for great. This Thank you for coming out. <laughs> <laughs> and, and by the way, let's do this. Elvin, and I don't know how you say Badger in French, but Elvin is the you're re, is Elvin responsible for Zyphus, Mary? Mm -hmm. I would say, for all intents and purposes, yes. So we were looking for a new executive producer of One on One. There are all a bunch of people who sent very weak resumes in. And Zyphus jumped out. But then we said, Mary said, you know what? A resume is a resume, but you need to see someone. And you also need to have a referral from someone you trust. And we trust no one more than our director, Elvin. Um, so Elvin will come in later because he's camera shy. But let me ask you this. You came from CUNY TV, right, Z? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I spent many years there. And that's actually where Elvin and I met up and, and had some adventures. Yeah. The biggest, and I was talking to you about this offline yesterday, you come into a new organization. Someone says, what the heck does that have to do with leadership? Well, a lot of leadership from our point of view is how you bring someone on board, how you make that person feel part of the team. Long story short, we're doing that remotely. You and I had breakfast a couple of weeks ago. We met for the first time, but you were already hired. What's it like coming onto a team where we don't even have an office that we're together in every day? It's, it's very curious, right? And we were talking about that sort of kind of learning people's energy and kind of trying to learn the staff that you're working with when you're in a remote environment. And, you know, as I mentioned with you yesterday, meeting you was a big part of helping me feel comfortable, right? Kind of recognizing your body language, seeing you in a space and not just, you know, knowing Steve Adubato from seeing you on television, but kind of knowing the man, seeing the man in person. And I think yeah, one of the things... Never, it was awkward when you asked for the autograph. It made no sense. But go ahead. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry. Exactly. You know, you know I, got, I got a little starstruck. You got to excuse me, you know? Well, yeah. I don't know what? I, I, in, in retrospect, gentlemen, I literally should have told Zyphus to do that just to throw Steve off his game because, no. Z, it is so hard to throw Steve off his game these days. That is something that I regret. Mary, the only thing is he made me just sign the check. That's all he said. That's yeah. all he that, wanted. Yeah. Go ahead. I picked, okay, we have breakfast. You have not met, did you meet Mary yet? I have no. not met Mary in person, but I can tell you that Mary, um, just even through cyberspace, is very warm. Her smile, Aww. her charm, that comes through very clearly. Keep going. 
<laughs> comes through very, very clearly. So I'm a very I good think, person. <laughs> yeah, between the two of you in particular, as leaders of the organization, your warmth, your your candor, that's been very, very helpful, kind of settling me in into the system here. Um, especially because you know the other executive producers are remote, so we don't really get a chance to to chat and and kind of get to know each other. It's very much hey, per the situation, you know, per the fire, we talk. And, you know, I'm constantly asking questions. So I feel like the newbie who, who's kind of like, you know, just kind of all thumbs. <laughs> but, well, I know. actually, I want to jump in on that one there, Zyphus, because one thing that I do miss is, and it's true, water cooler conversation, right? In our old office, we had a water cooler and everybody would go out to fill up their water, get a tea, get a coffee. I was laughing last night. We actually used to watch a soap opera at lunch together way back in the day. We would convene, really? you know, yeah. yeah. No, you weren't included, Steve. I'm sorry, but <laughs> I've never watched soaps in my life, but I was into it. Why? Because you got to sit around the table up on the third floor. We had a TV. We would break bread together for a half hour. Well, that's what right. advice? Yeah, like it was, it's so different. And I can't say that I dislike it. I mean, I'm a very, I think most of us now are very independent workers. We get our stuff done, but we do lose some of that. So talk a little bit if you're being onboarded, if you're, and I hate that word, it's a horrible word, but coming on to getting, a new team. If you're coming on to a new team, what advice do you have, not only to us, right, as, you know, what we're doing right, what we could be doing better, but more so for other people out there that are just starting a new job, just getting acclimated, but they're doing it in a virtual setting. What advice do you have to those folks? One of the things that I thought that you guys were really great at is, was that you introduced me via Zoom meeting to everybody. So I had an opportunity to have a chat, get the vibes off of the different people that I would be working with and, you know, for the foreseeable future. So I thought that was a really great step that you guys took. Um, you know, there were a lot of meetings and I was just, I told my wife, I said, babe, I got meetings like every, every hour, but I, it was great because it was, it just helped me to get to know everybody. And I think what you did, Steve, in particular, you know, letting the, the boss, the CEO of the company meet the person because, you know, we're a small organization. And I thought that was a real touch of class because it really helped me to, kind of know you a little bit right we we had a couple of laughs we talked a little we talked a little sports and society and i think for somebody new coming into a team you need that you you need to kind of foster a rapport and that's so essential because at the end of the day you need people to be able to communicate with you right you need people to feel comfortable yeah. and when you create that camaraderie you create that rapport i think that's great i, I think something that and i just think that you know, you guys really knocked it out of the park with that one. And, you know, I, I know there are plans for other kind of physical meetups. And I think in a in a virtual space where we are siloed, trying not to be, if you will, balkanized, um, it, it's tough. You know, it's tough, you know. It um, is. And um, but I think that we're I think that we're that you guys are doing a bang up job of that. So, you let, know, high let, praise. Let me, let me... Sorry for interrupting, Z. Let me, let me follow up with this. So one of the things we were talking about, I was talking to Zephyrus offline yesterday, as I said, and one of the things I keep asking myself, because on Lessons in Leadership, I think you know that Mary and I, me more than Mary, I obsess about giving feedback. Feedback that is in real time, that is candid, that is specific, that is concrete, and that sometimes for the other person is hard to hear. Meaning, of course, we all want feedback that says how great we are. But in one of the chapters in, in this book, I'll promote it about 100 times during the show, Lessons in Leadership 2.0, The Tough Stuff. There's a chapter called Feedback is a Funny Thing. For you, Z, here's the question. We're pretty direct. I'm direct. You get that feel. That's part of our culture. It's never intended to hurt anyone's feelings, but sometimes I'm sure it does. It's intended to get better. The norm from your experience a and B, do you appreciate it? Want it? Don't want it? Because you're getting it anyway. I love feedback. I think it's important. Um, I think that's one of the things that I, I always I'm willing to do violence to my work, right? To need to make the necessary changes. Um, so I, I enjoy feedback. I enjoy feedback. I prefer feedback, like when something has happened. And you and I, we've had conversations, you know, aside from others about, hey, look, you know, I like what you did here but could you have done it this way instead? And to me, I need to learn your system. I can't come in and try to break the system. I have to come in and try and fit in and do what I can. So I love feedback. I love constructive feedback. And for me, that just it's just going to help me fly, right? Because- But I have to go both ways. Exactly, exactly. Because I think- You know, Elvin gave me, I don't know, Elvin, could Elvin come in? 
Alvin, I know you're, you're running command control over there, but I said this a hundred times on Lessons in Leadership. Elvin has given me feedback. Elvin's given, listen, I don't know all the feedback Elvin gives. He mentors so many people, coaches so many people, and it's not because they report to him. Sometimes it is, but he just does. Elvin has given me feedback, but this is the question, and I'll bring Elvin in on this. For you, Z, how comfortable are you giving feedback back to quote unquote the boss? He's really a team member with the highest rank. But the fact is, it has to go both ways, correct? Yes, sir. Absolutely. And and I think for me, and this is me being fully honest with you, I need more time. I want to learn you, you know, because right now I'm learning from Elman you. Elman gave it because... to me after the first day. I didn't want it, but he gave it anyway. <laughs> well, Ian and I are different. well, Ian and I are different animals. I will give you feedback, of course, Steve. But I also think that for me, I, I like to gauge, I like to sit and listen. Right. I always like to sit and listen first. You can ask my wife. You can ask my, my dad in law. He always says to me, you're always listening. Z. Because for me, I always like to understand what's going on first. And mm -hmm. maybe for me on a just a kind of a personal level, when I take in and I ingest information, I like to analyze it first. You know, I, I've been accused of analysis paralysis in other parts of my life. You know? <laughs> um, so I like to analyze information. I like to analyze things. And so I can give thoughtful answers. And so that my response can be as constructive and not just an emotional response to something, you know? I, I got it's 30 years in the business. I got to learn that. So, uh, Alvin, let me try this. You recommended, Z. Question, what leadership traits do you see in Zyphus that you said, you know what? This is a very intense team. We work hard together. Um, sometimes it's functional. Sometimes it's not so functional. I take responsibility for all of it. Why recommend your friend and colleague to come into this universe? Uh, so I really believe that Z is very patient, as you already know. You see, he's patient. He's, he chooses words very wisely. I've never seen Zyphus get upset about anything. And if he has, he's very calm when he's upset. He's not, he's, he's not loud. He's, he's not boisterous. He's just calm, cool, cool, collective, and he'll say his mind, and then he'll move on. He has a great way of how do I say, getting people together. Even when they're doing wrong, getting people back together, fixing the situation and moving forward. Um, Zyphus, I, I also thought he would be great for this because he's been on camera before. He's been on air That's before. Right. So I felt like he knows how to executive produce. He, he can always step in if he had to. He, he's a jack of all trades. That's good stuff. Thank you. Ma Mary, one of the reasons we did hire Zyphus, other than Elvin's recommendation and other Zyphus knocked out of the park. Talk about communication. It was remote. He knocked the interview out of the park. It wasn't really. Yeah. And that that is so important. And I am one of my major faults is I make first impressions very, very quickly. Within a first minute, I will decide about somebody. And I'm working on that because sometimes people are either awkward because they're nervous or they're socially awkward. Uh, when we met Z remotely, it's so funny. You always remember where you were. I was in Las Vegas on vacation and and took the meeting from the bingo hall, which was hysterical. And just that feeling of warmth came through, the feeling of confidence and just reassurance. And and you can't fake that, right? All the other stuff can be taught. And I know Zyphus, you know, you mentioned it, learning our systems. And we are a small, tight-knit group, but we churn out a ton of stuff. So it's going to be a learning curve for you in that regard. But what you can't teach is passion and caring. So that is something that we recognized in you right away. Zyphus, uh, I know we've taken most of your time in the segment, but I want to ask you this. Your confidence, uh, Elvin talked about the fact that, you, and you, it, we haven't, El, Zyphus, has, as of this date, has not been the executive producer for a full day taping. So we're going to see how calm he really is when it happens. <laughs> that he's, being said. He's gonna, he's, you know why he's going to do great? Because I recommended him. <laughs> there you go. And then Man, here we go. Let me just, I, I always, and I, and I always say this, I always say this. There's no us. There's no Zyphus. There's no Elvin. There's no Sylvester. There's no Scarlin without Frank. Frank is a great judge of character and he's passed that on. And that's why you have a team around you. Frank Brown, our, our audio engineer. So Frank, so for, hold on, Frank gets responsibility, gets credit Frank, for Zyphus? Listen, anybody I bring in, Frank has to get the credit because he brought me in. Wow. 
I thought you were going to say there's no team without Steve, but okay, that's all right. Don't worry. No, no, that's all right. Don't worry about well, it. There, well, there is no team without Steve because Steve cuts checks. Cyrus, <laughs> <laughs> we took too much time, so I'm going to ask you something. You, um, Elvin talked about you being calm and cool, and, and that is a great question. And by the way, you're way too polite for Jersey. I'm just going to say this. You're very, it's like, sir, and thank, and, and, and I appreciate it but I'm just not used to it. <laughs> that being said, where does your confidence, not only to be a great executive producer and leader come from, but to be on camera, which is a great addition for us because people, that's why Mary's on this show. People are saying, I'm tired of seeing Adubato alone. That's why Jackie Tricarico is on camera and remember them and Think Tank. That's why it's great to have you on camera. Where's your confidence to be on camera come from, which is a leadership trait. Go ahead, Z. You know what, Steve? It comes from back home in St. Lucia where I was put on stage as an actor. I had uh, a bit of, you know, acting in some small plays and so forth. And I credit, you know, my acting teacher at the time, Kendall Hippolyte, for that, for having the confidence in me to put me on stage to say, you know, put this play on. I remember one particular thing, uh, a play called Shrove Tuesday March. It was a Caribbean play um, by <clears throat> Roderick Walcott, who is the, um, the brother of Derek Walcott, the, you know, the Nobel laureate and so forth. So that play really helped me kind of come into my own and gave me confidence to speak on stage because I had this long monologue. And um, I think from that moment on, I think it kind of just was in me to to be up on stage and to have the lights on me, you know, and not shirk from them. Well, listen, I'm not going anywhere anytime soon, so don't try to think you're going to take this job. Not, <laughs> not at yet. all, my good man. Not at all. Not at all. But I'm you not as pretty as you anyway. Yeah, well, I got a lot. I, April made me look really good with the makeup. So hold on one second. I just want to say this. For those of you who watch our sister series, one-on-one, uh, one-on-one one -on -one think tank, remember them, a state of affairs, but particularly on one-on-one, -on -one, uh, Zyphus is going to be the executive producer of one-on-one. Yes, he'll be behind the scenes making things happen, leading, coordinating, managing, doing all the things he has to do, but he'll also be on camera with me in a whole variety of situations to frankly add to our product, because I'll get off on, on this point. You can't stay the same. I know it's called one-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato, but you got to mix it up. I see uh, all kinds of great, like Christiane Amanpour on PBS. It's Amanpour and Company, not Christiane Amanpour alone. You need other people. Plus, I'm, you know, getting long in the tooth here, and I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to be doing this. So I'm not making any announcements today, but that's why you need to build future leaders. To Zyphus, thank you. Thank to you. Elvin, thank you. To Frank Brown for bringing us all together. Uh, on the audio end. Mary, do we do we even have any time left? I don't even know. I don't think we have. I mean, I, I saw Elvin putting it up. If I had to guess, we have about a minute. One minute left. I, and I love that Elvin has the ability to be on camera with us and speaking about multitasking. That's just phenomenal. But I do want to just take a moment to say thank you to Z for trusting in us to making the move and to coming to work with us. We're really looking forward to seeing how it evolves and seeing how your first taping it's in January, I believe, when this show will yep. be airing as well. So yep. uh, we'll definitely have you on again. And it's going to be great. Hey, Zyphus, check this out before we go. You ready? Uh, I don't know if you realize, but I have a whole bunch of uh, knickknacks and things. Does this, do you recognize this at all? Can you see that? But did you document but, it? But <laughs> I'm just saying I'm obsessed about documentation. Follow. He's laughing because he knows what that means. He you already got, figured that one out. One pagers. <laughs> and you know what else? Everything is figure outable. That's my favorite. I, I'm going to get that on a T-shirt for sure. So uh, to Elvin, to uh, Z, to Mary, to our whole team, to Frank Brown behind the scenes on the audio end. Thank you, everyone. This has been Lessons in Leadership. Steve Adubato. And don't worry, I'll plug my new book on another show. Don't worry about it. We need to get it looks shiny, but not in real life. Hey, listen, see everyone next time. This is Lessons in Leadership. We're done. This edition of Lessons in Leadership is made possible by the Bucino Leadership Institute at Seton Hall University. Prager Metis, Valley Bank, the International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825, the North Ward Center, the New Jersey Sharing Network, Delta Dental of New Jersey, the Helix, Fedway Associates, Inc., the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, Veolia, resourcing the world, and Seton Hall University, showing the world what great minds can do since 1856. This is Mary Gamba. If you want more leadership tips and tools, log on to stand-deliver.com. That's stand-deliver.com. Promotional support for this edition of Lessons in Leadership with me, Steve Adubato, 
and my colleague Mary Gamba has been provided by NJ.com, NJBIA, and New Jersey Business Magazine, CIA NJ, and Commerce Magazine, and Meadowlands Chamber, celebrating 50 years of building connections and driving business growth.